Good morning. It's Thursday, February the 4th, the Thursday after Septuagesima, morning prayer at the Rectory of St. John's Church in Savannah, the 1928 prayer book on page 6. I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Let us therefore humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant a most merciful Father for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Psalm 95 on page 459. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with that generation, and said, it is a people that do earn their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Psalms for the fourth day of the month uh, begin at morning prayer, begin on page 363 of the prayer book. There are Psalms. 19, 20, and 21. Psalm 19 is a song of praise for God, the revelation of God's glory in the heaven and in his word uh, and its diffusion throughout the world. It's a celebration of the uh, gospel light that fills the world. And then Psalm 20 and 21 fit together. One is a prayer for Christ the King and his victory. The other is a thanksgiving for his victory who now lives and reigns forever and ever. On page 363, Psalms 19, 20, and 21. The heavens declare the glory of God, 
and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. One day telleth another, and one night certifieth another. There is neither speech nor language, but their voices are heard among them. Their sound is gone out into all lands, and their words into the ends of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which cometh forth as a bridegroom out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a giant to run his course. It goeth forth from the uttermost part of the heaven, and runneth about unto the end of it again, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is an undefiled law converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, and giveth wisdom unto the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, and giveth light unto the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, and endureth for ever. The judgments of the Lord are true, and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant taught, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can tell how oft he offendeth? O cleanse thou me from my secret faults. Keep thy servant also from presumptuous sins, lest they get the dominion over me. So shall I be undefiled and innocent from the great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from thy sanctuary, and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings, and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Grant thee thy heart's desire, and fulfill all thy mind. We will rejoice in thy salvation, and triumph in the name of the Lord our God. The Lord perform all thy petitions. Now know I that the Lord helpeth his anointed, and will hear him from his holy heaven, even with the wholesome strength of his right hand. Some put their trust in chariots, and some in horses. But, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord, and hear us, O King of heaven, when we call upon thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The King shall rejoice in thy strength, O Lord. Exceeding glad shall he be of thy salvation. Thou hast given him his heart's desire, and hast not denied him the request of his lips. For thou shalt meet him with the blessings of goodness, and with the crown of pure gold upon his head. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest him a long life, even for ever and ever. His honor is great in thy salvation. Glory and great worship shalt thou lay upon him. For thou shalt give him everlasting felicity and make him glad with the joy of thy countenance. And why? Because the king putteth his trust in the Lord, and in the mercy of the Most Highest he shall not miscarry. All thine enemies shall feel thy hand, thy right hand shall find out them that hate thee. Thou shalt make them like a fiery oven in time of thy wrath. The Lord shall destroy them in his displeasure, and the fire shall consume them. Their fruit shalt thou root out of the earth, and their seed from among the children of men. For they intended mischief against thee, and imagined such a device as they are not able to perform. Therefore shalt thou put them to flight, and the strings of thy bow shalt thou make ready against the face of them. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength. So will we sing and praise thy power. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In our reading from Genesis, where we come now to chapter 11, beginning at the first verse, the uh, famous story of the Tower of uh, Babel, as the British call it, or Babel, as the Americans call it. Um, and uh, here the it's the archetypal story of the city and community of human pride and arrogance against God and how it is 
humbled. And uh, um, we'll have more occasion to speak about that. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them throughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Here endeth the first lesson. We'll read the first part of the Benedicite, which begins at the bottom of page 11. O all ye works of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye angels of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye heavens, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye waters that be above the firmament, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O all ye powers of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye sun and moon, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye stars of heaven, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye showers and dew, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye winds of God, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye fire and heat, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye winter and summer, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye dews and frosts, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye frost and cold, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye ice and snow, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye nights and days, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye light and darkness, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye lightnings and clouds, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. Let us bless the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Praise him and magnify him forever. Amen. Here begins the 24th verse of the 17th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. And there's a short episode here uh, about paying tribute tax to the Romans, which uh, has to do with the relationship of the kingdom of God to the kingdoms of this world, and then a longer passage about greatness in the kingdom of heaven. And when Jesus and his disciples were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Doth not your master pay tribute? He saith, Yes. And when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, what thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children, or of strangers? Peter saith unto him, Of strangers. Jesus saith unto him, Then are the children free. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea, and cast an hook, and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take, and give unto them for me and thee. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, 
except ye turn and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me. But who shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me? It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life, halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye, rather than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. How think ye, if a man have an hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. Here endeth the second lesson. Well, in a kind of um, happy uh, coincidence, uh, our Old Testament and New Testament lessons fit together beautifully. One is about uh, the humbling by God of the city of human pride and arrogance. Uh, Babel or Babel, uh, the archetype of Babylon, uh, the city united by love of self to the point of contempt for God. And over against it, of course, the new and heavenly Jerusalem, the city of love for God to the point of contempt for self. We're in a journey from one city to another. We're in the journey from the city of pride to the city of humility. For Jesus tells us the greatness in the kingdom of God, high status in the kingdom of God, is, uh, the, the, uh, uh, is bestowed upon those who are least uh, in the eyes of the world. The model for discipleship is the humility of a child um, someone without status, someone who does not have uh, the ability to um, promote themselves at the expense of others, um, which is to say that status in the kingdom of God is not something we grasp for with sharp elbows. Uh, it is rather something we receive with humble gratitude. It is the gift, indeed, the free gift of his grace. And uh, as this lesson already hints, um, that's not only about our relationship with God, but uh, humility, but also with one another. So uh, we give thanks uh, for the God's triumph over uh, the city of pride uh, and uh, give thanks and praise that he has established um, the New Jerusalem um, as the city for uh, his little ones. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the dayspring from on high hath visited us, 
to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, let us pray. United in the confession of the one faith in the one Lord, let us commend ourselves and one another and uh, the whole church of God uh, to the mercy and grace of God in Jesus Christ. Especially I bid your prayers for our country and its leaders, for our churches and the faithfulness of their witness and worship, for all those who suffer in mind, body, or estate, that they may have patience under their sufferings and a happy issue from all their afflictions for all those departed this life in the faith of Christ and who do now rest in peace. And for all those uh, uh, for whom we've been specially moved to pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O Lord, we beseech thee, favorably to hear the prayers of thy people, that we who are justly punished for our offenses may be mercifully delivered by thy goodness for the glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. On page 19, please join with me in reciting the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, 
and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. I want to conclude by with my little scripture reprise, and this is from Psalm 20, and as I mentioned, this is a kind of prayer for the victory of Christ the King, but because we are members of Christ, it is also a prayer for um, uh, <clears throat> a prayer for us as well, and uh, so I make it a prayer for each of you. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary, and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice, grant thee thy heart's desire, and fulfill all thy mind, that we may rejoice in thy salvation, and may triumph in the name of the Lord our God. The Lord perform all thy petitions. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen. The Lord Almighty, order your this day and your doings in his peace.